What's going on filmmakers? I'm Alexandra Don and welcome to the final part of the behind the scenes jewelry commercial. So let's see the footage that we're gonna analyze today. It So guys, what do you think about the final footage that we're gonna analyze? The good part about this is that we don't have only one scene, we have three scenes that we're gonna analyze in this final part. So if you're new to the channel and if you're seeing this video first time, I suggest you watch the first, second and third part first so you can know a little bit better what I'm talking here because all these three parts are connected between each other and it's really important for you to watch the other parts so you have a better understanding of what we're talking here. So without further ado, let's go behind the scenes and let me explain how I achieved this image. So if you're used to the other episodes, you know that in the first one I talked about my camera gear and lighting gear. But if you forgot, I'm gonna tell you again that I shot the entire thing with the Sony FX6 with the 50mm f1.2 from Sony, all autofocus, and I had a filter in front of the lens to smooth out my skin tones. Because we have a lot of face in this commercial, uh, we wanted the skin to look as good as possible. And secondly, my lighting of choice for this commercial was Nalite, which is my favorite lighting company and I love using their lights every day, anytime. So let's go behind the scenes. So we're gonna start with the first scene that we shot and this one is really interesting because we shot the entire thing at a building that had 24 or 25 floors. And this is kind of crazy for Romania. We don't, don't usually have building this tall. And since we were at the last floor, like uh, 25 uh, floor, we wanted to have a little bit of the town in the background like we wanted to have the lights and everything but it was kind of hard because the lights in the background were not so visible and our light the light that we have right here so if you look on the clip on the left you see that we lit the entire thing with only one pavo tube and i was at iso 12800 on the sony fx6 and my pavo tube was at one percent and even at one percent was way too bright for the scene that we shot because I had to increase the ISO so I can see the background and I also had to dim down the lights from the room in order to uh, match the exposure with the background so it was kind of a little bit hard but I think I managed to make it even though like I said the power tube from up top was 1% in intensity and it was still too bright but um, I wasn't really that happy with the results and how it was looking. So we only shot a few um, shots here and we ended up moving the scene in a different position. But I still made a few shots and um, I think they look pretty good, but I'm not super pleased with them. We ended up moving to a different location in the same space, but this time this location looked way, way better and I managed to make my lighting the way I want it. So as you can see, we have a mix panel 150 with a softbox on it and a grid. This grid allows me to limit the spread of the light and uh, the light goes where I want it to go. So imagine this, you have a softbox and the softbox gives you light like this. So it goes like, this is the light and it goes like this. When you put a grid on your softbox, the light then goes like this. It doesn't spread on uh, laterals. So this is why you really need to use grids whenever you wanna control your light a little bit better. So as you can see, I'm using one light source and um, from this behind the scenes, you cannot really tell how much lighting I'm using but I'm gonna tell you right now. So if we look at the clip, you can see there is a really small pavo tube in the back and two other pavo tubes on the left. So look at the image on the left. You're gonna see two pavo tubes uh, that stay there with their own magnets. So the pavo tube 6C 
have their own magnets so you can just stick them whatever you want and I put them there so I can have a really beautiful backlight on her hair and on her back as you can see it looks really nice I really love the effect that it gives and because I have this uh, filter in front that smooths out highlights it also smooths out my lights and it looks like super bloomy and the filter is from Prince Les Effects it's the dream filter but anyway I really loved how this uh, shot turned out and um, I'm, we're gonna do a little bit of um, lighting diagram so you can see exactly how I set up the shot. So let's draw the space that we filmed. So here was the table, here she was. So in order to make this really nice, we have to take a look at our space. If we take a look at the space, we see that we have a little bit of LEDs in the back that are from the NOR logo. And these LEDs are right here and this LEDs were giving me a little bit of light on her face, but not that much. So it was a little bit feeling the space with light. But the thing is, these LEDs had a really yellow color in terms of white balance. So they were around 2,900 Kelvins. And the good part about nail lights is that you can basically set up your uh, white balance on the lights. So I put the other lights, the Pava tubes, on the same temperature. So I have the Pava tubes one right here, one right here, and one right here. And these Pava tubes were giving me light like this and like this. So these Pava tubes were on 2900 Kelvins because I wanted to recreate the same lighting that I had in the room. And my main key light was here with uh, the grid on it and the light was going like this. So this was the mix panel. My camera movement from here to here and I also moved the camera at some point here. So I hope you understand uh, a little bit uh, from the sketch what I wanted to explain. So we're gonna move to the next scene where we had a lot of fun. Unfortunately for this scene we don't have uh, behind the scenes because my assistant Chipri had to move the light so he couldn't film me while he was moving the light. But anyway, let me show you what we did. So basically, we had a two lighting setup here that uh, was pretty creative. So one light was my uh, main key light, the mix panel 150. And the other light was the projector lens with the Forza 60B and they both had a different white balance and we also took advantage a little bit of the space we shot in because there were a little bit of LEDs up top so uh, we still had uh, lights in the room so what we did is that we had the uh, projector lens with the Forza 60B from the side and Chipri was moving the light like this and because we filmed in slow motion it looks pretty cool but to understand a little bit better let me show you a lighting diagram so you can see exactly what I'm talking about so I'm gonna draw the space so we had this corridor that was like this uh, we had LEDs in top so this was this were LEDs and I had my actress here because we were playing with the projector lens I had to put it in a in a place that we don't really see it so here was the projector lens with the Forza 60B on 2100 Kelvin and this was giving light like this and we were moving this light a little bit and my other light was here with the softbox this is the mix panel this one was on 5600 and this one was giving me light like this so a really simple setup that is actually very effective and if you look closely at some point she stands against the wall and this is the wall where she stands so we had her here and the light was moving from here to here and the only thing that I did is like move this light in this position and that's it so really simple setup really good use of lights so the thing is whenever you see creative stuff you don't have to get in afraid of lighting you don't really have to get afraid of lighting because sometimes the best lighting I ever saw are the most simple you really have to to be creative whenever you use lights in a way that 
it doesn't limit your creative camera movements, your creative vision, and also your time on set. Because sometimes you might spend hours and hours making a lighting setup and then you realize that you don't really like it and you lost a lot of time, a lot of valuable time. So that's why whenever I'm on set, I'm trying to be as practical as possible and as fast as possible because time is money. Like if you, if you finish the project fast, you're gonna be back home, you're gonna be chilling a little bit, you're gonna enjoy your time with your family and you're not gonna be tired as hell for the next project that you're gonna do. So use lights smart and you don't need a ton of lighting to make a really beautiful lighting. So I really hope you enjoyed my series on this behind the scenes. If you enjoyed it a lot, I'm gonna try to do something like this next time but in the meantime make sure you subscribe because i had other projects where i filmed behind the scenes and you're going to be blown away on the results so let's meet again on the next one and until next time i really want you to go out there create some epic content and have fun cheers guys